the Japanese garden is an iconic garden for the Huntington. If you'd been here at the time I came in 84, you would find that the Japanese bridge was on the cover of every telephone book in the area for years and years and years, and it was bright red. Now, I don't know whether it's the idea of the Japanese garden or an actual experience in the Japanese garden or the, the charm and quaintness of these structures and this different style or the allure of Japan. Maybe it's a little bit of all of those. The Japanese garden is here for the delight and education and inspiration of many people, but the general public being a, the primary, a primary audience. We have the original Japanese garden, which Mr. Huntington built, which you can look at in two totally different ways. You can look at it as a beloved landscape that, that has such character that, and charm that people flock to it. Or if you are um, more feet and knowing in ways of Japanese gardens, you could look at it as something that's not really Japanese at all. It's Japanese American and kind of a, an eclectic come together. It's grown a lot because Mr. Huntington's Japanese garden, the core garden, was about two to three acres. It's now nine acres. It will be 12 when we finish. We will be able to continue what is a very Japanese process, and that is to see Japanese style assimilated by a broader culture and appreciated. To present it in a pure form and to present it in its many different manifestations. Japan having three garden traditions, all of which now will be present at the Huntington. The tea garden, the stroll garden, and the dry garden. We will complete the trinity. Once you put a lot of effort into learning about the Japanese garden and the Huntington Japanese garden in particular, its history, its antiquity, its relationship to cultures, its relationship to individuals, its own particular piece of this green earth, you slowly bond with it. Almost anyone in the world can relate to a garden. It is the, the ecumenical meeting place for all cultures. So a garden is a good place to bring people together. And that happens to be kind of nice. And so when you work in a garden and you put in a lot of effort, not just hands-on effort, but intellectual effort to learn about it, to connect to it, um, you do fall in love with it, I think. It's easy to fall in love with a garden. So, so the, the hardest lesson in a garden is giving it away, you know, because if you hover over it and protect it and do not allow it to change or take on new audiences, you smother it. And so, so the very thing you love the most, you have to give away.